Alright, here we go. Final set. Across the ocean, you pull me close. The current change, show me life, a new horizon, a silver line. Hey! 
Hey church, it's Pastor Josh, and um, I had the chance to catch up with our good friend Cody Byrne from Perth, Australia. He's a church planner. Him and his wife are getting ready to start Tribes Church in Australia in just a few weeks. And early one morning, because of the time difference, it's like a 12-hour time difference, I got a chance to catch up with him. And, uh, you know, we really believe in church planting. It wasn't long ago that we were planting Cross and Anchor Church. It's only been about two years. And when people came alongside of us and supported us, uh, it made such a huge difference. And so I'm excited to talk with Cody, catch up on how he's doing, and then let him know about something that we're able to do for him. Uh, and we're talking about generosity all today, so check this out. Yeah, Australia's like the spot to be, man. Perth specifically. Yeah, it, it seems like it's not even a thing anymore here. Like, I had to wear this into the office. Dude, this thing, right. this thing probably has whatever the new strain of coronavirus is. <laughs> probably like where it came from. So our church has been like super generous this year, and we really love what you guys are doing, and we want to invest ten thousand dollars into your church plant launching <laughs> in March. <laughs> you for real? Yes, I'm for real. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, man. Far out. I don't yes. even know what to say. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Thank you, my man. Dude. <laughs> Bro, the people at Cross and Anchor, we love you. And we just believe in you and Chantel and what you're doing. And we feel like it's good soil. And we want to be a part of, of investing into it and um, we're so excited for you guys. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, bro, th thank you so much, man. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, man. I'm all, I'm hot and bothered at the moment, <laughs> man. But... <laughs> Seriously, man, like, th thank you so much, dude. And that's exactly what, you know, I'm really overwhelmed, man, just this year and what we've been through and just, you know, all the, personal things uh, so I mean we've all been walking through the same thing man and just to see you know the Lord so faithful and generous man and that uh, you know you all would just step out in faith and trust that man I mean, it's, that's ridiculous bro that's 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 our biggest gift so far man and it just <laughs> it means so much and, and really bro like, thank you yeah it's that, gonna that's, that's good it's gonna go toward impacted a lot of people man <laughs> bro so thank, thank you brother <laughs> i believe it i believe it man i love the fact that you know the gospel is going to the whole globe so we're actually gonna um uh try to like depending on restrictions and travel and all that stuff we're gonna try to come for your, for your launch if we can wow so <laughs> bro. uh yeah. wow bro that would be a party, man. Oh my goodness. Yes. Dude, I honestly, Josh, man, like, I'm seriously, man, so thankful for you, just individually, man, like you and them, but specifically, man, like you, you guys have been just so incredible towards Chantel and I, you know, and we, we just feel so much love, man. Like even, you know, you having me out before we left, man, like, that was just incredible, man, to just be there and to, you know, just see your generosity and, man, just your your your, your love, man, and just how you would, you know, invite us in and you supported us, man, and just all your invitations so far and your friendship, man. Like, honestly, dude, I, I don't have many words, but just thank you from the bottom of my heart for riding with us, man, and for just being there and being such a great friend. And, bro, I, I'm just, I'm on the moon right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Perth is Thank never going to be the same. Never, man. Honestly. Never. Yeah. Never, yeah. man. Hey, welcome to Church Online. If you have not been greeted already, consider this your formal greeting from myself. My name is Emily, and I just wanted to tell you about a couple things that are coming up at Cross and Anchor. We have our once a month in-person service, worship at the Garden. Um, it's at the Garden Theater in Midtown, right here in Detroit. And uh, 
It's so special to gather in person. We love that we get to do church online, but gathering in person is just that much better. And this is gonna be a great service because we have the one and only Andy Rosier from Vertical Worship. He's gonna be joining us and we're so excited and we want you to be there. We want you to be a part of it. And so come, uh, bring your family, bring your friends. It's gonna be a really special time together. So that's January 31st at 7 p.m. As you know, we just finished up our year-end offering and we are honestly so blown away by what God did through that offering. And I just wanted to tell you a little story from that. We say often here at Cross Anchor, we are blessed to be a blessing, but you don't always get to kind of hear how that plays out. One of the ways that the year-end offering played out is that as you know, small businesses were hit really hard during 2020, especially with the pandemic. And we started to pray about ways that we could bless our city, the ways that we could come alongside people during these tough times. So we specifically prayed about a small business right here in our city that is doing amazing work in our community. And we were able to give a gift to them. What we didn't know is that this gift covered two months of salary for their entire staff. And they didn't know if they were gonna be able to have that. That is what your giving did. That's what your giving does. So we wanna to continue to invite you into the gift of generosity. We believe it is a blessing to give and to be a blessing. So as you give today, all the ways are on the screen. Thank you for joining with us in being generous to our city. We love you, we're so appreciative of you. And uh, we're gonna just dive now into a message from God's word. We love you so much, church. Great to be with you again as we continue in this series, Planted. Last week, we talked about being planted in God's house, the soil that produces growth in our lives. And this week, I want to talk to you about something that is a core value, a core tenet of our church, what makes us unique and what we feel like God's called us to do. And I want to tell you today about generosity is our privilege. Generosity is our privilege. I think, I think once you have found good soil, like we talked about last week, you want to be able to invest and pour into that soil so that you can see even more continued growth. And today, we want to talk about living a remarkably, ridiculously generous life. I believe that's what God has for us as a church, that we would be marked by our crazy generosity. Generosity is not just about finances, although it for sure includes that, but generosity goes into a lot of different areas of our life. It extends to our time, our talent, and our treasure. That being said, we are going to talk about our financial resources today because that's important. Listen, Jesus actually talked more about money than he did almost any other topic, which is crazy to think about. And the Bible has a lot to say about finances as well. And so for me to be a faithful pastor, for us to be a Jesus church, we would not be doing that justice if we did not talk about our financial resources. But this is what I want you to know through all of it, is that God isn't trying to take something from you, but he has something for you. And when you hold back and don't give everything that God wants you to, then you miss out on seeing his generosity in your life. Here's the big picture today. If you were to take this whole message and sum it up into one sentence, it would be this, and it's going to make sense by the time we're done, is that generosity is actually God's gift to you. Generosity is God's gift to you, and I'll explain that as we go. Well, why are we generous? Why do we want generosity 
to mark our lives and to mark our church? Well, simply because God is a generous God. You cannot get more generous than God. You can never outgive God. He always has more to give than you could ever give to him. God is a generous father. In fact, the Bible says that every good gift, every good gift comes from God. Every good thing that you enjoy in your life is actually a gift from God. It didn't just happen to come into your life, but God is the giver of all good gifts. He's a lavish gift giver. He loves to give gifts to his kids. And of course, the biggest gift of all was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. What could be a more valuable thing? What could be a more prized possession than your only son? And God didn't spare his son, but he gave him to us to show us how much he loves us. So God is a generous God, and that generosity is coming out of his extravagant love for us as his children. And so we want to be generous people because God is a generous God. And that's why we say generosity is our privilege. Not our obligation, not our duty, but our privilege. It's a delight to be generous. First Corinthians, it says this, talking about generosity. It says, the point is this, that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. That sounds good to me. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Why does the Bible go out of its way to talk about the kind of giving, the attitude with which we should give? It's because God loves a giver who doesn't have to give, but gets to give, a cheerful giver. That word cheerful, another way it could be translated is hilarious. Meaning like somebody who is so jacked up that they can give that it's like they're laughing about it. It, it, It's so much joy. It's like, and it's ridiculous. It's God loves a hilarious giver, somebody who's just crazy in their generosity. We want to be that kind of a church. And listen, we've tried to be that kind of a church since before we even began. Before Cross and Anchor started, we gave to different nonprofits in our city. One of the first ones was a a nonprofit that builds benches at bus stops so that people had a place to sit while they waited for the bus, which there's not really great public transportation in Detroit. The bus is really the only public transportation. And some people, elderly, handicapped, uh, and, and in other ways, having a hard time with, you know, having to wait for a long time at the bus stop and it being very uh, inconvenient to them, we were able to build a bench and just put it in a place where people could have access to it. And we've given homeless outreach and we've given to people who have been less fortunate and we've given to church planting. And we want to continue to be a generous church. But the only way that we can be a generous church is through the generosity of God's people. I want to talk to you today about the concept, not just of generosity, but of another biblical concept. And before you tune me out, let me explain it to you. It's called tithing. Tithing. Now, this is maybe something that's like, you're going to talk about tithing on a weekend? Like, people don't want to talk. If there's something you don't talk about at church, it's money and it's politics. And so don't get into this tithing thing. Well, Again, the Bible talks about it, and so if I'm going to be a good pastor, then I need to talk about it so that that you can have God's blessing on all of your life, including your finances. The, The concept of tithing, let me just explain it briefly. It comes from the Old Testament, and it doesn't start when the law was given, as many people might misunderstand. It actually starts before that. There's a guy named Abraham in the book of Genesis, and he goes to battle, and this king fights with him. The king's name is Melchizedek. And because of the king going to battle with him, Abraham is able to rescue his nephew, Lot, who had gotten into trouble. And so after the battle, Abraham, as a thank you to Melchizedek, gives him 10% of all that he owns. And this is where the concept of tithing comes from. Because tithing just means a tenth. 
Literally, that's what it means, is a 10%. And Abraham said, 10% of everything I've got is going to go to this guy, Melchizedek, for the way that he helped me and rescued my nephew. Now, Melchizedek was the prince of a place called Salem, which means peace. And so Melchizedek was the prince of peace. And without getting into all the nitty-gritty of the theology here, there's a lot of people who actually think that Melchizedek was Jesus pre-incarnate, before he was born on earth. And so Abraham is saying, I want to thank you for rescuing my nephew. I want to thank you for the good things that you've done in my life. And so the concept is God has given us everything. Everything that we have is a gift from God. And so as a way to say thank you to him, we take 10% and we give it back to him. This isn't a have to. This is a get to. And, and really all of our money is God's, not just 10%. But this is a way to say, God, I'm putting you first. G God, before I pay even the rest of my bills, I want to just take 10% off the top and say thank you for everything that you've given me. This is an important concept to grasp because tithing is not about a magic number. Tithing, I believe, is the training wheels of giving. It's not the ceiling, it's the floor. Like, God wants us to be ridiculously generous. Tithing, I think, is just the beginning place of us giving to God and to others. Tithing. Now, if you're looking for a good read on this subject, a book that really helped me was The Treasure Principle by Randy Alcorn. And he really opened up this idea in the Bible that really made it clear for me and helped me to understand. And it's just a little book. I, I don't even know how much it is. It's probably like 10 bucks. You could read it in a day. The treasure principle would be a really helpful thing to you if you're trying to get your mind around this concept of giving. But then let's fast forward and let's go to the book of Malachi in the Old Testament. And in the book of Malachi, the people are not giving 10%. They're holding back what was God's. And so Malachi tells them this. He says, speaking on behalf of God, Bring the whole tithe, the whole 10% into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. That's really important. That's the only time in the Bible that God tells us to test him about anything. So if there's one thing you can test God in, it's this. In obeying him through tithing. And see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven... And pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Listen, tithing is not about God getting something from you. It's about something that God has for you. And if you would trust him in this, you see, it's not about the, the 10% and the I'm going to be legalistic and I'm going to, it's not about that. It's more of a heart issue about trusting God with the first fruits of all that he increases in your life. You will never go wrong by giving to God out of what he's given to you. Let me just tell you, you cannot outgive God. And so I'm inviting you into something today. Not to take something from you again, but because God has something for you. I want to invite you to trust God and even test God in this concept of tithing. And maybe you're, you know, we just did a year-end offering. And, and the truth is, we do talk about generosity most weekends at our church, but devoting a whole message to this concept isn't something that we typically do. I can't think that, uh, I think it's been over a year since I've talked about this. But, but we want to let you know that this is our, part of our identity as a church is that we're a generous church. And so we're tithing as a way to say thank you to God and as a way to trust him. And so if you have never done that, here's what I invite you to do. And Emily and I do this, is we take 10% and we give it to God. And oftentimes we give more than that. But if you haven't set up any kind of giving in your life, I would say you can go to the website, crossandanchor.church slash give. And from there, you can select an amount that you want to give. And you can even set it up recurringly so that it happens automatically. And I would recommend this because for me, I forget a lot of times if I'm, you know, if it's not scheduled, I might forget to pay a bill or I might forget to do something. And so we have it scheduled 
every time I get paid that 10% of what I get paid just goes right back to God through the local church. And listen, I've seen how God has used that to bless my life in times of abundance and in times where it's hard. But listen, I would rather have 90% with God's blessing than 100% without it. And if you're struggling to pay the bills, why not just like see if this is something God uses to unlock some really incredible things in your life? So tithing is a concept that, that we talk about at Cross and Anchor, generosity. And let me make a distinction here. There is a difference between being generous and obedience. Like generosity is like, I'm going above and beyond. We just did a year-end offering, and the idea with the year-end offering was, I'm going above and beyond. And maybe for some of you, you were like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to tithe for the first time, and that's awesome. But the concept for generosity is we're going above what God's already told us to give, beyond that to do even more things. And many of you have done that with this year-end offering, and I'm excited to see how God uses that. But the beginning place, the starting point for giving is tithing. Why are we making such a big deal out of this? Well, again, because you're going to see how God uses this in your life. We have story after story of God doing incredible things in our life as a result. And there's people on our team that have stories of how they've trusted God in giving and he's blessed it. And, and I can't wait to hear the stories that come out of this. How God just miraculously provides or does things that we can't even explain because God loves us in every part of our lives and our finances are included in that. So why not trust God this year? Why not start off this year by putting him first in your finances and by being generous so that we can continue to be a generous church? Did you see how the verse in Malachi, it said, bring your tithe to the storehouse and God says, so that my house can have food. Listen, if you take care of God's house first, he'll make sure to take care of your house. If you say, I'm going to put you first, I'm going to make sure that your house is provided for, you just watch how God uses that to bless your life. And as there is an increase, you continue to give as well. Maybe for some of you, you're like, I just, I just don't know how I can do that right now. I, I, I just don't know. Okay, listen. First of all, maybe it is a stretch. And if it is, this is just a time to trust God. And for some of us, if we would really take a look at our finances and our budget, we'd find out what it is that we're passionate about. Listen, if you love hockey, I guarantee you that you're spending money to go and watch the Red Wings play hockey and lose right now. Hopefully next year they'll get better. If, if you love coffee... I guarantee you, like my wife and I, you're going to see a large portion of your budget going to a coffee shop. If you love Jesus, you're going to see that reflected in the money in your bank account. And if you don't see it reflected in the money in your bank account, then I do have to question, where is the love? Not because I'm judging you, but because Jesus said where your treasure is, there your heart is also. You can find out what you love and you can find out what you're passionate about by what you spend money on. Plain and simple. And if Jesus is number one in your life, then he should be number one in your finances as well. Love you, church. I'm excited to see what God's gonna do in 2021 through Cross and Anchor. This is gonna be, I really believe this, I'm not just saying this, this is gonna be our best year yet. We're gonna see more people come to know Christ, we're going to see more reach with the influence that God's giving us. We're, we're going to see deeper roots go down. We're going to see our church not just grow in numbers, but grow in depth. And we're going to see God use us like never before if we'll be planted in the house of the Lord.